Hello, and welcome to Steph Udall. I am, cartoonishly, Steph, and it's collab time, baby! I hope you're ready for a blast from the past because we've got not one, not two, but seven retro anime dolls. So after you're done watching this video, go check out the beautiful dolls from all my collaborators. Dolly Mixtures, Dolly Crafter, Telly Dollies, the Dolly Geek, Jackie O, and the Hatter Dolls. Links to their channels will be in the description below. I'll be making the chaotic neutral badass space pirate Ryoko from Tenchi Muyo, specifically the Tenchi Universe TV series that ran in 1995. It's the first anime I ever intentionally watched, after a friend in high school lent me their VHS tapes. It's goofy and fun to watch and still holds up surprisingly well. Now let's get started. I'll be using the body of this WWE superstar Asuka and the head of this Wreck-It Ralph 2 Anna. I think they'll make a great combo. I remove each of their heads by heating the vinyl with my hair dryer until it's squishy and then gently remove it, taking care not to damage the neck peg. So here's what I'll be working with. I cut the hair off as close as possible to the scalp and use a flathead screwdriver to scrape away the remaining hair plugs. I tried removing it all with tweezers through the neck hole, but it wasn't super effective, so I ended up making a slice in the back of her head and removing the rest of the hair that way. I removed the factory paint with pure acetone and then cleaned the head with isopropyl alcohol. The neck opening on the Anna head is smaller than the Asuka neck peg, so I use a craft knife to widen the neck hole in the head and shave down the neck peg a bit. Since I'll need to repaint it to color match it to the body, I decided to go ahead and reattach the head now. It's still a little bit snug, but it works. I then close the opening made in the head with super glue. Ryoko has long ears, sort of like squared off elf ears, so I'll need to modify them. I start by trimming off the ridges from her upper ears. I mix equal parts A and B of epoxy sculpt and begin sculpting. For the first pass, I block in the general shape using water and silicone tools to smooth everything out. After letting that cure overnight, I sand the ears before mixing more epoxy and adding detail. As before, I use silicone tools and water to help smooth the surface as much as I can. The next day, after everything is cured, I sand the ears again before cleaning everything with isopropyl alcohol to get rid of dust, fingerprints, that sort of thing. As you can see, the skin tone of the head is a bit different from the body. I'm not too confident about mixing skin tones myself, so I ordered a few different ones so I'd have a good base for mixing. I swatched all four colors and compared them to the body, and it looks like it's somewhere in between basic skin and sunny skin. So I make a mix of those two to give her basic sunny skin. <laughs> well, once I'm happy with the color, I begin painting the ears and the head in thin layers. I think I ended up with three or four layers, and it's honestly the best color match I have ever done. I give her a couple of sprays of Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat, waiting 30 minutes in between each layer, and get to work on her face. I keep a reference picture open on my phone as I work. I start mapping out her eye shape with a yellow ochre watercolor pencil. I fill in her eyes with white pastel pencil. I draw the base for her eyebrows with white watercolor pencil, and then I go over them with gray.
Her lips don't really have color in the anime, so I'm going with a natural pink color for them. As usual, I'll build up the colors layer by layer, spraying her again with MSC when I can't build any more color, and waiting 30 minutes for it to dry before I start working on a new layer. I'm also looking back at my reference pick fairly often. I decided to try out my Conte Soft Pastels for this face up, using a brush to pick up the pigment directly from the pastel. They tend to build color more slowly, and I wanted more subtle blushing this time. I use a white Posca paint pen for her catch lights and a little highlight on her lips. And her face up is done! For her outfit, I decided to make her blue and gold dress. I remember wanting that dress for myself, it looked so comfy. I traced the original Asuka t-shirt on graph paper and sort of extrapolated the pattern out from there, laying the doll on top of the paper to check measurements from time to time. I used my light box to trace the pattern pieces and then cut them out. And I'll be using these fabrics. And here it is, after a lot of hand sewing. And here's her belt, complete with a tail. Ryoko doesn't have a tail herself, but she likes wearing them as accessories. Fun fact! But she still needs her boots, which are basically anime Uggs. I'll be using the Asuka shoes for a base. With the shoes on, I wrap cling film around her foot and lower leg. Then I cover that in masking tape. I draw a few guidelines and cut it off up the center back. This won't give me an exact pattern, but it will give me a jumping off point. I cut the tape into two shapes and trace them onto paper. I cut them out and play around with them a bit. I 
I end up cutting squares of felt for the ankle portion, adding a slit in the center to fit around the shoe. I refine the shape for the toe portion, trace it onto the felt, and cut out two. I fold the ankle part in half, sew a back seam, and then turn it right side out. I slip it onto the shoe and attach it with super glue. Then I glue on the toe piece. I clip the edges of the felt and glue them all around the bottom of the shoe. Looking good so far! To fill in the gap a bit on the bottom of the shoe, I glue on a small piece of craft foam to help level everything out. Then I glue the shoe onto a larger piece of craft foam that I'll be cutting down to make the sole of the boot. Finally, I add a thin strip of craft foam around the bottom of the boot, completing the sole. To give them a bit of a scrunchy look, I put the boots on the doll's feet and add rubber bands to hold the scrunch in place. Then I wet the felt around the top of the boot and let it dry overnight. I don't think it will hold permanently, but it'll do the job for a while and I can always repeat this step if needed. I almost forgot to make her earrings! <laughs> I made them with teeny tiny bowls of silk clay and bits of wire. Once everything was dry, I coated the connection points with Mod Podge to add stability. 
Then I painted them with red acrylic paint and added a coat of gloss varnish. It was super fiddly work, but worth the effort, I think. I left the hair until last because I will be honest, I was scared. <laughs> I made a wig cap pretty early on in the process, as you can see here. And I took these two colors of yarn and blended them to make all of these wefts. I made so many because I knew I was going to need to pack the wig cap full of them to achieve the volume I wanted. And here's the wig with all the wefts glued on. Before I style it, I'll secure the wig to the head with some tacky glue and let it dry overnight. I apologize, but I'll be doing the styling off camera as I have never done a style like this before and I don't really have enough room in my filming space at the moment to use hairspray there. But here's all of the supplies I'm going to be using. A comb, thread scissors, an eyebrow razor, my hair straightener, a metal chopstick, and got to be glued hairspray as it is the choice of cosplayers. I'll see you all in a bit. Oh my gosh, I did it, y'all! She looks awesome! Also, this stuff smells like tropical fruit, what the heck? Now all I have to do is get her dressed, and she's done. Overall, I'm so so happy with how Ryoko turned out, and I think I captured her really well. It made me so happy to see her all together for the first time, and I was so afraid of making that gravity-defying hair, but I did it! What do you think of Ryoko? Have you ever watched any of the various Tenji Muyo anime series? Do you have a favorite retro anime series or film? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm really interested to see what y'all have to say and maybe I'll find something new to watch. Well, new to me. Old cause retro. You get the idea. And remember to go and watch all of the other awesome videos for this collab from my lovely collaborators Dolly Mixtures, Dolly Crafter, Telly Dollies, The Dolly Geek, Jackie O, and The Hatter Dolls. Links to their channels will be in the description below. And an extra special thank you to The Dolly Geek for organizing this collab. It was a blast from the past. Get it? I'm referencing the beginning of the video. Anyway, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more from me, and click the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. You can also follow me over on Instagram at Stefudal. Until next time, bye!